So what would be the topics covered in this lecture? And they are, first the prerequisites. The prerequisites will be discussed and you will need to have the prerequisites already installed and an active subscription for Azure in order to complete the tasks in this lecture. And then we'll create a functions project with Visual Studio 2022 and update the functions code, run and verify the API locally, publish the project to Azure, hit the function access key, configure API management, verify the API in Azure, and download the open API definition. And finally, we'll clean up the resources. So let's switch over to Visual Studio 2022. And before that, I will show you the prerequisite for where to install Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition in case if you don't have the installation in place. So again, the prerequisites are Visual Studio 2022. So I've got a link over here and we'll click on this link. And this is going to bring me to this page, Visual Studio Community in download. Okay, so I will put this into the description of this video from where you can use the um, link to download the Visual Studio Community Edition. And next, the Azure subscription. So you have to have an active Azure subscription and you can create a free account if you don't have any active Azure subscription. So you click this link, this will bring me to Azure page, azure.microsoft.com slash NUS, English US slash free slash dot net. So you can start free. So you can start with $200 Azure credit. Okay. So you have to finish it within one month. You have got one month to finish this Azure $100, $200 credit. Okay. Now let's go back to the business of actually creating the Azure project. So let me bring up the Visual Studio. So this is my Visual Studio and I've already searched for Azure functions. So in case this is not available in your recent project templates, you can just look for Azure functions over here or you can just start with just functions and it will bring the Azure functions if it was um, not already there, it will bring it to here. All right. So I'll come back. Or I'll highlight this and I will click on next. And I will have to configure my new project. Okay. So I'll have my uh, location. This location is, I'll just change the location a little bit. So I will give it a default name of um, turbine repair and we'll keep it unticked list solution and project in the same directory we'll do without taking this and then go to the next and additional information I have to give so I'll be using .NET 6 long term support so you can just click to see find out .NET 6 isolated long term support .NET 7 isolated .NET framework so this present tutorial is based on a Microsoft tutorial and I'll be putting the link in the description as well as in the video and it is a .NET long term support and function will be HTTP trigger with OpenAPI and use Azureite for runtime storage account for Azure web job storage, All right? And authorization level is function. There are two other authorization levels, but we'll go for function. Okay, and then click on create to create the project, Azure Functions project. Now this turbine repair project is created and in front of me. And by default, there is one function, one class is created and we'll change the code in the function one to make it more practical. Now this project is about a turbine repair. That means, you know, when uh, the turbine is down, it will calculate how much will be the repair cost and how much will the turbine get a profit over a particular 
period of time say one day and it if the repair cost is less than the turbine profit cost out of the generation then it will be a yes reply the response would be yes that means the, it will be profit profit is more than the actual cost of repair it will be i mean a yes response and otherwise it is a no response so if it is not profitable if the repair cost is more than the turbine can generate as a revenue then it will be a no now here it is important to know that parameters are supplied and there are two parameters uh, to supply to the functions either in query string or in the payload of a post request and these parameters are hours which is the estimated time to make a turbine repair up to the nearest whole hour and a capacity the capacity of the turbine in kilowatts okay so now i am going to um, change the code write over the existing default boilerplate code for this function with the code that i have on my clipboard from the microsoft tutorial so i will just highlight everything and paste my code which i have got on my clipboard and i will explain things um, a little bit to make it more interesting so this is a um, turbine repair namespace and it is a static class turbine so you have got two constants you know there are the three constants one is revenue per kilowatt that is 0.1 to whatever be the currency unit as it doesn't matter maybe cents okay um 12 cents or 0.12 dollar and technician cost is 250 the unit is not important it is just a um calculation okay so turbine cost is 100 so now function name is turbine repair so we have given it a name function name attribute and open api operation operation id run so we are going to run it through this attribute open api operation um and open api security is a function key and um, so we will not um delve deeper on all of these um, security feature all of these attributes which built up this function because this is a, a more of a um, function that will be published to Azure and there are things which are in the context of the present tutorial more important like you know putting it in the API management and how do we do the all the processes that will be more important but things are pretty straightforward as it is isn't it because it is these um, attributes are quite self-explanatory aren't they so open api request body is application slash json type and type of request body model and description is uh, some description is given like json request body containing hours capacity and open api response this is the request body and this is the response with body the response type should be status code dot ok content type application dot json slash json and body type is string and description is the ok response message containing a json result it will be the response body as we'll see soon in this uh, example and then we'll create a run method which is a static async type async task of i action result okay asynchronous function and um, this will have http trigger authorization level dot function so which we have already filled in the additional information uh, if you revisit the formation of this project again then you'll find that we have given the authorization level as function and it is a post request route is null http request rq and i logger log so this is all uh, Filled as parameter, and then request body is formed over here. So it, uh, the application is calling a new stream reader dot read to end async. So request dot body. So request which was fed as a um, argument request dot body uh, is given to the stream reader stream reader type, and it was read to end asynchronously. Where request is HTTP request, which was given as an argument. And then dynamic data, this data variable, it 
actually deserializes the uh, request body. Okay, and then nullable capacity is data type data multiplied by the capacity, and int hours is data whatever data into hours total number of total capacity and total hours. Okay, right. Um, if capacity equals equals null or hour null, then return bad request object result. Please pass capacity in hours in the request body. Okay, then it will return a bad request object. And it now formulas to calculate the it calculates the revenues and the cost. So both are of uh, nullable double type. Cost to fix and revenue opportunity. Revenue opportunity is how much revenue you will generate. In 24 hours, revenue per kilowatt hour into, um, sorry, revenue per kilowatt into capacity in kilowatt. If you look into this capacity, um, revenue per kilowatt turbine cost 100 and capacity in total capacity um, in kilowatt into revenue per kilowatt into 24 in one day or 24 hours of time. And the cost to fix is number of hours into technician cost plus the turbine cost. So turbine cost is already given 100 units. Okay. So cost to fix is this and if the revenue opportunity is greater than cost to fix the repair turbine is yes. The answer is that you should go ahead with the repair of turbine and on the other hand if it is less then the repairing of the turbine is of no use because it is not beneficial. And return and actual result type OK object result with a message repair turbine which will be either yes or no and revenue opportunity will be calculated with a dollar prefix to revenue opportunity and cost to fix will is the cost to fix that is calculated over here with a dollar prefix that's all and request body model class has got it's a body model uh, it's a model class request body model it has got hours and capacity so that's to the code. Now we will run this application and wait for this to um, render the browser. Now when you run this function, the open API endpoints make it easy to try out the function locally using a generated page. You don't need to provide function access keys when running locally. So when functions runtime start locally, a set of open API and swagger Endpoints are shown in the output along with the function endpoint. So we'll wait for the uh, function endpoints to appear over here in this uh, console. So again, in our browser, we'll open the render swagger UI endpoint, which is this one: HTTP colon localhost colon port number slash API slash swagger slash UI. So I will just minimize this console window a little bit. And um, uh, okay, minimize this window also, and then over here, I'll put the Swagger UI URL, and now this is Open API document on Azure Functions. Okay, now what I can do is uh, HTTP scheme. All right, everything is prepared. Request body model. Um, post you can try it out so I can write values so if I click on try it out and hours if I put hours as say uh, 6 hours for turbine repair and capacity of 2500 kilowatt and then click on execute then I will get a response which is message is yes, revenue opportunity is $7,200 which is more than the cost to fix that is $1,600. So that is giving me the 200 response status OK code. So now I have a function that determines the cost effectiveness of emergency repairs. Next I will be publishing my project and API definitions to Azure. Now we will Publish the project to Azure. 
So in the Solution Explorer, right click and click on Publish. So this Publish window comes up and the target appears. It's still loading. So in the target, it's already highlighted on Azure and I click next. Now it is going to map windows. So the selected one is the correct. Okay. So click on next. Okay. So already have an account. I'll have to sign. It. Now I have been logged in. When I was struggling to log in, I found that, you know, after entering my credential several times, it will still not log me in. So what I found was the remedy was to just um, reboot the Visual Studio. Just close the Visual Studio and reopen it. And it, I was, uh, the, the logging was being recognized. Okay, so now publish the target is Azure subscription one. Specific target, it's nothing is coming. So anyway, so function in instance, I have to create a new function. Okay, specific target was Azure Tutorial and create new in the create new. So, new Azure function. So, here it is already pre filled with the name and subscription name is Azure subscription, resource group is Azure Tutorial, and plan type consumption. All I will go with the um, default, which is already pre selected for me. Azure Storage, it is already created, application inside this. Um, let me see, cannot create this. Um, so yes, the create button is now, um, active. I can click create. So it will create a new function app. We validating all properties. It will take a while and we'll come back after it has created the function app. It is still creating the app service after a couple of minutes but we'll have to be patient for it to complete creating the app service and i will come back once more so it is now created a function instance which is already over here consumption with deployment slots so at the moment there's nothing on the deployment slots but that is um, not required for um, the time being in this tutorial also so click on next next is the api management tab okay so in the api management tab we still have the azure subscription one as the target and in the api management we'll have to create a new instance so create a new instance so api name is already filled turbine repair azure subscription one resource group api management services required so Here also, I will create a new one. I don't need to create a new resource group, but I need to create an API management service. Click on new. So, turbine repair, API management, turbine repair API, it's pre filled. Australia Central, Kaushik Roy Chaudhary, but administrator email is also written, but OK button is not there. So, let me troubleshoot and I will tell you. So now I've changed the name to Turbine Repair Service Azure API Management Service and then it is OK. Now click on Create. It's revalidating all the properties and it will take a, its own sweet time before creating the API in API Management. After a minute or so it is still creating api in api management so i'll have to wait patiently for this to finish creating the api okay it's all done api is created for me and i click uh, finish so it is creating some profile publish profile now you could either have Take this automatically close when it's succeeded, but I can close it manually. Now this is ready to publish, so I can click 
publish button. This is the publish button. So it will publish. Publishing to Azure function. App Windows. Okay. So make it bigger. Let me see. Connecting to publish targets. All is all are happening in the background. So we'll come back again once it is published. It is building the output. Showing here publish started. So which is good. It's doing the publishing. Now I'll have to get the next step is get the function access key. So in the publish tab, so in the publish tab, we'll select this ellipsis next to um, hosting and open in Azure portal. Open in Azure portal. It will click, it will open the Azure portal. I'll bring it to this side, the window this side so that you can see. The Azure portal is loading. So this is my turbine repair, such and such. Um, and it is showing the $280.49 New Zealand dollar credit is still remaining out of the US dollar 200 credit. Okay. So I will not go for upgrade to a pay as you go subscription as yet. Um, all right. So now I clicked function. So turbine repair, it came correctly. Your app is currently in read mode only because you're running out of a package file. So don't worry about whatever is written over here. Um, just overlook and under the function keys. So um, under the function keys, where is the function keys? So I expanded and under the function keys, I click function keys. Then I select the default hidden value, click to show value, and I copy this on my keyboard. I could renew the key value, but there is no issue. So I will let go with the default already created for me. You can always change it. Okay. And my, my next step will be to configure the API management. So let me bring the uh, Visual Studio solution again. And this time again, I'll have to clip the um, Click the ellipsis near to the hosting and open API. Click on open API in Azure portal. Now this will uh, bring the API management instance we are just created to the Azure portal in my default browser, which is Chrome. The API management instance is already linked to my function app. So under APIs, okay, I've got this open API document, open API document on Azure functions. I'll click that and under post run, okay, then under inbound processing, I will bring this um, scroll bar down, um, add a policy and this will be, um, Set query parameter. Okay. And um, in this set query parameters, you can run, learn more about the set query parameters policy if you click on this link. So I'm just leaving it to a future uh, lecture, maybe. But at the moment, I am just being practical and showing you the practical approach of what we set to do in the agenda. And against name, I will put code. Against value, I will add value. And then add the key that I have got. And then save. So policy for operation run saved successfully. Now that the function key is set, I can call the API to verify that it works when hosted in Azure. So our next item of learning is verify the API in Azure. So in the APIs, I will now select test. Okay. 
and here i will in the post run tab click on post run in the request body i'll have to add some code so here is my request body raw okay so hours is let me put the hours at 6 like we already did it on swagger locally when we run so remember we have already tested with the 6 hours and capacity of how much was the capacity if you remember 2500 so we are going to do the same thing we are going to repeat the same thing on azure now it's on cloud and click on set so again you got the same message message yes revenue opportunity 7200 cost of 1600 dollar and uh, that's great so got this response back which is 200 ok response which is in conformity with the earlier one that we when we tested it locally okay so now the last step is to um, download the open api definition file because my api is working perfectly fine as expected okay so under apis i select this and i can um, export yes let me export okay download these are the download definition you can export it in any of these formats open api version 3 yaml open api version 3 json open api version 2 json and wati okay so let me click on this and it will start downloading in that chosen version okay so it is actually downloading now it is downloaded let me open this file So open API definition file is already created for me and downloaded. That's great, isn't it? So it is uh, working the way it is shown in the tutorial, Microsoft tutorial. So I'll close this. This open in the Visual Studio Code, and I I have the choice to um, choose any of these format or all of these format just for playing around. Okay, WSDL, SOAP API, and standard XML representation of uh, full api so everything is now fine working order the final step is cleaning up the resources so in the preceding steps we have created azure resources in a resource group and if you don't expect to need these resources for the future you can delete them by deleting the resource group okay from the azure portal menu okay home resource groups if I want, I can say, remember, this was my resource group. I can delete this resource group, okay, so as not to incur the cost, okay. And, uh, um, but, you know, I can persist if I like. Let me persist because I'm still within my credit. A uh, lot of credit is there and I have to finish it before one month, before the expiry of that credit. Okay, so thank you for watching and listening to me so patiently hope you like this please put your comments and feedbacks and subscribe to the channel